Hey folks, it's Jerry with TradeTheFifth.com. I want to talk a very short amount of time, hopefully, with uh, Market Profile because some people ask some questions about that. So this area here is today's Market Profile uh, for the day, and I have it split out so that the uh, half-hour segments are strung apart from each other as opposed to consolidated together. I like to do that during the day and I actually have one that's consolidated that I watch as well but in any event I'm just going to talk through this trade a little bit. Here's yesterday's session and I want to point out that I do not have the overnight hours on. So this is the 9.30 to 4.15 sessions and you can see the high of yesterday was here and when we opened in this A period, this yellow A is the open for the day, and I drew a blue line there showing the open, and I usually watch price action in and around the opening period. So in this particular case, we have a pretty good size gap. I think this is about five or six handles on the open. And the gap rules would imply that if in the early trading session the gap doesn't close, you want to go with the direction of the gap and in this case be long for the day and you can see I'm not replaying this session uh, but this orange stripe here shows where the first five minutes worth of activity was we opened here we came up and down and we kinda chopped around this area and we tried a few times to get into the gap and every time it was quickly rejected and we came back up after the first five minute print uh, segment of time we started working our way upwards and we did come you know chop around up and down up and down in this area a little bit and then we opened the B period with this yellow uh, print as the open of the B period which is the second half hour of the day and that ran up here now this blue line or cyan line is the first one hours worth of trading which is indicated by the A and B periods and each one is in half an hour and often a go with trade is going to be if we break the opening hour you want to go with that trade on the break and 67 percent of the time you will make one half of this opening hours range in this case it'll be up here somewhere and 50 percent of the time you'll make the entire range from this point to this point as long uh, the length of this blue stripe which I think is about uh, 10 points uh, 10 handles and you can see actually on this day we ended up making a high in the D period which is about twice the opening range uh, pretty bullish day on the side here in this picture some of the internals I watch are the ticks which is this uh, up here and you can see in the, you know two other indications where this was a strong bullish trend day one that you don't want to fade under any circumstances since we did not fill the gap uh, we had the advanced decline line in thinkorswim it's dollar sign ADSPD which is this S&P 500 advanced decline line and I usually use 300 as a um, litmus test for trend days and typically if you find uh, the opening uh, advanced decline line over 300 out of 500 stocks and it really doesn't make much push to get below 300 it's going to be a pretty strong trend day the entire day and you see that indicated by a couple of different things the ticks for the most part stay above zero right this yellow line is zero and a tick is um, advancing issues uh, that are bought on an uptick versus sold on a down tick and it's the difference between the two in the New York Stock Exchange, right? So this is the nice tick. And you can see that for a great deal of time, um, almost most of the day, the ticks for the most part spent all of their time above the zero line, meaning that we have more stocks up ticking than down ticking for most of the day. Pretty bullish sign. So you get a couple of bullish indications here and you know key factors I look at to identify early on trend days. Advanced decline, ADSP, SPD, advanced decline line of the S&P 500 over 300 and sticking there and ticks, uh, you know, for the most part staying above zero. A couple pushes below, but for the most part, those are my dogs, that's my doorbell. Um, the, advent, uh, the ticks are staying above zero. Okay, so we're into the end of the day and we're looking at the A period. The B period comes back down a little bit, tries to test down back towards the gap again find support comes up. Now there are trades you can take uh, breakouts above the A period. Some people will take a long for that. 
um, you know, taking a long breakout over here. Um, I talked about the opening range breakout here. That's a long trade in uh, a trend day. Again, trend day identified by this opening gap from the high to the open. We tested into it, didn't find any, you know, continuation to close the gap. Uh, then the trade is going to be bullish and on a trend day it's you know don't fade the trend it's probably the biggest thing that's run me over early in my trading career trading futures is continuing to think that I want to fade these these kinds of days and you will find more time than not you're gonna lose money and you're gonna lose a lot of money over a lot a long period of time trying to fade these trend days um, so we find ourselves up around noon time you know we, we one time framed up here a higher high, another higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low in C period, D period, and F period. And by the time we get into the J period, uh, excuse me, the I period here, uh, in this area, um, we're you know starting to find uh, a little bit of, let's say, price consolidation. And it's not uncommon common during the noontime hour we're going to find some time that we're going to consolidate you know we've had a pretty big bullish run with a gap and we're finding some balanced trade here we spend you know one two three four five almost six half hour periods about three hours in this area so you can say that price is pretty well accepted uh, and this is where uh, you would say the value area has formed it's higher than the previous day which is down here you know these green prints and in between this you know uh, blue lines is prior days value area we have clearly extended the range and we now have a value area forming much higher we had a gift later in the day we ended up having uh, an extension out above that we tested higher we ended up pulling back down the Boeing news came out and to me this was a gift you know we had a pretty big sharp drop uh, down to here you find that we're still now we're starting to test bit back inside the opening first hours range we didn't even get down to the top of the a period which is down here um, you'll see that uh, there was some high volume activity here and in this zone we found support in this K period this is not yet for me a trade but the one thing you should be thinking about is Boeing is one company out of thousands and thousands of thousands of companies and while the news is important to Boeing, and Boeing certainly took a hit, and the Dow, you know, futures to some extent sold off with it, it's not really something that affected Apple or Google or Facebook or, you know, thousands of other companies that were trading during the day. It was an emotional liquidation break on a, uh, you know, below what was the trading range value for the day. Normally, you would look at that as a buy. Uh, if you didn't get in or didn't, you know, hold your nose and buy it here, you find that, you know, we had some chop around trade. It came back here. The L period opened up in this right here. We ended up coming down and testing it again, but we did not break below that K period. That is a golden trade right there. You could take this trade with a stop down in this area potentially. And if it's going to work, it's going to find its way back up. And we did get some chop around trade in this area, but this trade was good for another six handles. You know, so if you were in this first trade and you got out nice uh, for maybe a 10 plus handle trade in this area, you're out of the market, you know, somewhere in this zone probably, you're out of the market. You have uh, flat, you get a gift here. Um, you didn't take this one outside of uh, trading you know outside of value to back to the long side where most of the trade was during the day you ended up getting a gift because it came back down and tested it and didn't break it the trade there is long I can't tell you how many times earlier in my trading career I would chase that to the short side not recognizing that you know huge amount of time was spent you know the trading day was what uh, a million contracts we probably had 800,000 contracts traded in this area Boeing's news is not likely going to drive a eight hundred thousand uh, dollars contracts worth of value up in this area uh, out of the market. It could, um, but it's not likely. And you had the activity that you know we tested it a couple times and found support and ended up with a nice end of day trade. 
Often, by the way, I will say, you know, the, the day ended before we got there, but often when you're in the value area and you get these trades outside of value area that you get in, the target is often back to the other side of the value area. And you'll see in the overnight trade, we did end up making it up there. If you carried it into the overnight session, uh, you were rewarded with another, I don't know, three or four points to get up to this side. Uh, I personally closed my trade here. Um, I like to, to, you know, close at the end of the day. So when we got up in this area at the end of the day, um, I closed my trade, you know, for I think about six handles more on the trading day. Uh, the, the other thing I'll show you real quick, if you're trading, you know, not using market profile, um, this is today's trade uh, in the Thinkorswim. We have our multiple time frame dots, the Elliott Wave Cloud from Paul's Elliott Wave um, program. We have the Stochastics. I use a MACD as a, a momentum indicator um, as well. And you can see in the pre-market hours, the opening was here at 930 in this area. Um, when we opened the session on the prior day at 6 o'clock, it opened with a small gap down. We came down, we tested, we tested back up to the opening price. Then we you know, had a good sell-off, I think, 8 or 10 points. These dotted lines are uh, standard toss indicators called pivots, pivot points. These are floor trader pivots. You can Google it and read about floor trader pivots if you've never used them and where they come from, why they're used and whatnot. But in any event, we did find support at the first uh, support pivot, came back up to the main pivot, uh, found uh, resistance there. We pulled back. This blue line is a one hour cloud. It's the one hour cloud printed on my chart. It's a indicator I wrote to, to put up an hour, um, but you don't really need something like that when you've got the multiple time frame. Uh, dot cloud. My anchor trend here on mine is 30 minutes, uh, which we typically would use for the five minute trading period. So this bottom line is 30 minutes. The second row is not used in the triangles and squares calculation. Um, that's done by the top three or four rows matching the anchor trend, which is the bottom one. Um, and you can see that we've had bullish price action uh, all day long. So we had the pullback to the cloud in the overnight session. We came up to the pivot, pulled back to the cloud, and then we started breaking above the open of the, uh, the overnight session. And we found our way up right around uh, 9.30 here. We had a small pullback just before the open. Then we had a little bullish run. And this little small red candle here with the wick, that was that uh, small pullback trying to find a way to close the regular time hour session gap, right? So the, the close is this blue line of yesterday's close, the regular time session, and the open at 9.30 was right around here. So the distance between this blue line and this is the opening range. And you can see we went up, we tried to pull into the gap, couldn't do it, and we just ran for the whole rest of the day up until this Boeing news. Um, I didn't draw the Elliott wave numbers here, but if you consider this to be the low of the day, this is a wave one, a wave two, a bullish impulse wave three, shown by the Elliott wave, um, you know, here, here's wave one, pullback, small shallow pullback for wave two, impulse wave, nice long wave three. Um, we got a pullback here that looks like it might end up being a wave four, which it ended up being. We had a high here for a wave five. You will note that the Elliott wave indicator, um, you know, did pull back. I don't think it pulled back deep enough for one of Paul's trades that he would take. It didn't pull back quite 90 to 90 percent. Um, you know, I can look at that and say it's probably about 80% and not un uncommon for a strong bullish day. But if you did buy the pullback that didn't even get to the cloud, you may have had another scalp where you stayed in the trade here. I wouldn't have taken it. I would have taken my profits in this area. You've got negative divergence uh, from the top of this down here, right? So the Elliott wave is making higher, lower highs, and yet price is making higher highs. So that's negative divergence. You're expecting a deeper pullback at this point anyway, or some level of uh, cons consolidation or chop in this zone. Yeah. Boeing news came in, and then we ended up getting the uh, the the uh, pullback uh, going up 
uh, to the end of the day. So anyway, that was the trade for the day uh, on two different uh, charts. Hope that helps. Take care, guys, and good luck trading tomorrow. Bye.